Hey guys, it's Jeff and yesterday Apple did in fact release iOS 13.2 developer beta 2 to all developers and they also released a public beta version as well. So if you are already on the public betas, you can go ahead and update. If you are not, go to beta.apple.com to get involved with the public beta updates. But I strongly suggest waiting until the end of this video to kind of see if it's worth updating to iOS 13.2 beta two. Now, since we were unable to kind of do a uh, kind of preview or, um, you know, insight into quick insight into all the new features and changes uh, that were found in iOS 13.2 beta two yesterday, we're kind of doing a follow up video here and review featuring all the new features that were found in this beta version and also giving our review of iOS 13.2 so far and giving you more insight into battery life, real life battery life test and speed and performance tests. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our review of iOS 13.2 beta 2. Before we get started though, the sponsor of today's video is the i18 TWS headphones. Uh, there's a link down below in the video description uh, to these headphones. They're exactly the same as AirPods. They have wireless charging. They have really good sound quality and they have a very good range when connecting to your iPhone. So if you want AirPods at a very cheap price and also more color options, check out the link in the video description down below. Okay, so we've had iOS 13.2 developer beta 2 installed on this device here for about a day now. And let's go ahead and check out the first changes that we saw with this update. Now it did come in on my iPhone 11 Pro Max at around 447.6 megabytes here. And the new build number that you'll see is 17B50688. E. Now let's go ahead and check out one of the latest new features or kind of changes uh, to this update. If you go down to the about screen in the settings app and check out the modem firmware, we now have a changed modem firmware. So we now have version 1.02. 0.08 and this modem firmware will be different depending on your device because each device will have a different modem So if you see a different modem firmware number there It might be different just because your device is a different device than what I have here Now let's go ahead and check out some of the new features that came with this update uh, a major one was actually emojis So we'll go ahead and check that out now So one change before we get started with emojis is that the emoji button at the bottom of the keyboard here has in fact changed so we have a very uh, different smile here than what we had in the previous update. The smile is just a little bit, it doesn't go to the edges of uh, the face. So it's a little bit more of a natural smile in that emoji. Um, a very small change here, but Apple did change that in this update. Now, if you go ahead and press on that button, you can go ahead and see that we have uh, some differences here for the emojis. So uh, we have new emojis and we'll review those in just a second. But if you go to, uh, let's say a pair, so this is a guy and a guy. Um, if you go and uh, kind of 3D touch that or haptic touch that, uh, you can go ahead and select your pair. So I can select, uh, you know, one with a mild skin tone there and then one with a completely um, kind of light skin tone and mix and match there. And then I can select that and that will go into my text. So this gives you essentially the ability to go ahead and select any pair here, um, pair it with, uh, you know, different skin colors should you be in a relationship, friendship, whatever it may be, uh, with different skin color uh, people, you can go ahead and create your custom emojis here uh, to kind of replicate or kind of uh, you know reference you and your friend or you and your partner, which is really, really cool just because um, it kind of sheds some light on racial equality and everything like that. But I'm not really focused too much on that. I think that it's a step in the right direction, not only for that movement, but also for emojis as a whole, just so you can get that further customization no matter what skin color you have. So that's really, really cool. So here we do have all of the emojis that have been added. So you can see that we have uh, kind of some hand emojis, um, some more natural emojis, and then we have some um, you know, body parts, arms, legs, robot arms, legs. We have some animals, um, some food items as well. Um, so I will have a link in the video description down below um, as to all of the emojis that have been added. So you can go ahead and check them out. Um, this is a website that which logs all emojis um, that come to the Apple platform. So you can go ahead, check that out for yourself and start using them accordingly. And uh, yeah, 
these are awesome new emojis and we've definitely been waiting for new emojis. Um, so if you have any uh, that kind of pop out at you that you really, really like, let me know in the comment section down below what you'll be using. In fact, just send the emoji in the comment section down below. Now, another really awesome change is actually found in uh, the camera app. And if you go to the video settings, you can now change those video settings through the camera app. You don't have to go into the settings app to change these. All you have to do is tap on um, HD and that will go to 4K. If I tap on the 4K, it'll go to 720p. So basically I can go ahead and change the resolution of uh, the video settings here directly through the camera app. Now what's really, really cool is not only can I change the quality, I can go ahead and change the frame rate as well. So that is a really awesome experience just if you want to go ahead and change frame rates really quickly. Um, it's done really easily all through the camera app. Now what's really cool here is if you go to slow motion, you can also also change your frame rate adjustment there as well. Um, so if you go to um, 120, you can go ahead and change um, that to you know 240 FPS and change that accordingly to what you want. So I think for slow motion especially, that's a really great option to just change things really quickly. And unfortunately, this is only for video, but I'm sure in the future, we might be getting some changes to uh, maybe the photos app for different kinds of photos that you're taking and what format it, it's in, but uh, a great step forward in the right direction for the video app here or for the camera app uh, changing video settings directly through that app. It's something we've never had before and I'm super stoked to have it now in iOS 13.2. So now in the music app, if you go ahead and tap on the shuffle button, you can see that we have a brand new animation here um, when tapping the shuffle button. Previously, it kind of just be very abrupt, not very smooth, but now you have an actual animation that replicates uh, kind of like a shuffle action throughout the music app, uh, shuffling your music so it will um, kind of be played in a different order when you go ahead and listen. It looks really cool, just a very small change here within the music app. Now one thing that I did notice is if you go to the app switcher, uh, things are coming up a lot faster when going through the app switcher. So if I go ahead and delete an app card from the app switcher, it's really quick to bring the next one to me and it's working a lot faster. So that's really nice to see. It's a faster animation if you go ahead and use the app switcher. I personally don't use it um, a whole lot, but it's nice for anyone that might use the app switcher quite a bit. You can go ahead and delete apps quite fast. Um, if you want to have, um, you know, uh, kind of delete all function uh, within the uh, app card, you definitely have to submit a request for that. Um, I definitely want to see something where you can go ahead and just maybe swipe down, or maybe there's a button at the bottom where you can go ahead and uh, basically delete all app cards. But this is a step in the right direction just because, um, you know, it's very, very quick to go ahead and just start deleting, um, you know, app cards should you not need them any longer. Now, another setting that has been changed within the settings app, if you go to Siri and search, uh, you can go to Siri and dictation history and delete that Siri and dictation history. There was a lot of controversy a few months ago. Uh, you know, Apple was essentially collecting um, your Siri data, your voice data, and people were reviewing it. And that was kind of like a privacy concern. So if you don't like that and you want to go ahead and delete your Siri and dictation history, you can go ahead, press that button and uh, press delete. Siri and dictation history and that will submit a request for that to be deleted and Apple will go ahead and delete that for you. Um, you'll get this prompt here where your request was received and um, yeah, it's just indicating that your request has been received and will be taken care of. You can go ahead, dismiss that and then go about your day. Now, another change that has been found and is an actually a really good one. If you go into uh, any app that you may have, uh, it now has the option to go ahead and delete the app directly. So if you go to, let's say the weather channel here, a little smaller menu uh, option, you can go ahead and delete the weather app directly from the uh, 3D or haptic touch menu rather than going to maybe edit home screen and then having to press the X. So it's just a faster way to kind of manage your apps and delete them should you want, should you not want them anymore. And I think that's a great addition just because it makes things a lot faster here. Now, another change that we'll cover in this video is if you go to the power off menu where you get the emergency SOS, you get medical ID and slide to power off, that is no longer black. You now have essentially your wallpaper in the background just blurred. Um, so it's a very different look to what we had before where the screen was just black, a very subtle change here within iOS 13.2 developer beta 2. 
Okay, so those were all the new features. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite new feature here is in iOS 13.2. And also comment your favorite emoji in the video description or in the comment section down below. I love to know what your favorite emoji is. I'll have my personal one in the video description just because those emojis are just a new fun way to communicate here within the later versions here of iOS 13. So let's go ahead and talk about speed, performance, and battery life as well because those are very, very important. In our tests with Geekbench, we actually saw an 11% increase in performance uh, on the CPU side of things. Now going over to the GPU side of things, we saw about an 8% increase in performance there. Uh, but in our real life tests, everything was pretty much the same, um, but we did notice that stability was definitely there within this beta version versus the last. So we have a lot more stability, less lags and stutters, and uh, everything is very, very speedy and quick, just like what we were seeing in previous versions of iOS 13. Now let's go over to Antutu benchmark because in Antutu we actually saw a about an 11% increase as well, uh, but that was overall performance. It was the CPU and GPU performance and that also tested the RAM as well. Uh, so overall with benchmarks, we're seeing a performance increase, but in real life tests, it's really not something that we're noticing. But with these benchmarks, we are probably seeing a little bit more efficiency. So things are running faster, because they're running more efficient. And with that efficiency, efficiency, we're getting better battery life as well. So let's talk a little bit about battery life. In our test with battery life, we saw about a 5% increase on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now with our iPhone XS Max and also the iPhone 8 Plus, we saw about a 3% battery performance increase in our benchmarks. Now in actual use performance, we're getting a lot better battery life in uh, all of the phones that I just mentioned, especially the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I used it almost all day yesterday and had way more than 50% battery left. And that was really, really impressive to me. So if you have one of the newer devices, you'll notice that battery life is getting better. If you have an older device, you'll notice that battery life really is just kind of getting slightly better, but is definitely not on the decline is as to what we we're seeing in previous versions of iOS, like iOS 11, iOS 10. Uh, if you had an older device, battery life was not doing well. But now with iOS 13, battery life is holding steady and even improving just a little bit with these software updates, which is really, really nice. Now let's get on to the review portion of iOS 13.2 and uh, kind of our recommendation of updating. I do highly recommend that you update to iOS 13.2 beta 2 if you are interested in the developer or public beta versions. If you want the public beta, go to beta.apple.com developer beta. There's a link in the video description down below where you can install that profile. Now, as far as new features go, you've seen new features in this beta version and also the previous one as well. So you'll be able to enjoy those new features uh, in iOS 13.2. But I think what's really interesting here is the speed performance, uh, you know, benchmarks of CPU and GPU and also the battery life as well. So if you want better battery life, especially if you have a newer device here, uh, like the iPhone 11 Pro Max, definitely try out the betas here because we're seeing really good battery life performance. If you want speed and performance updates uh, to iOS 13.2 versus what we're seeing in iOS 13.1.2, uh, definitely go ahead and update because speed and performance is definitely higher in iOS 13.2 and it's only continuously going up rather than going down and you know having less stability like what we were seeing in iOS 13 beta. So these betas are really stable, they're really fast and I do highly recommend that you check them out just because you get all of these new emojis to play around with and uh, kind of some other new features as well. And you'll definitely want to go ahead and check those out. So guys, that was our review of iOS 13.2 beta two. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing beta three next week with even more new features that we are expecting to see in iOS 13. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any comments, questions or anything like that, please comment those in the comment section down below. If you notice any other new features as well, please comment those down below. I know we didn't get to all of them. I didn't want to bore you with all of them uh, because there's other videos out there. But if you want to kind of share with us your favorite new feature and it's something we didn't find, definitely leave that in the comment section down below. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this review on iOS 13.2 as it is now in the betas. Uh, we do appreciate you guys and hopefully we'll be seeing you in some upcoming content. To see you in the upcoming content, make sure to get subscribed, like the video as well, 
and hit that bell button to get updates as soon as that content is released. So guys, again, thank you all for watching and hopefully we'll be seeing you in some upcoming content. Peace.